Hello everyone and welcome to AGCAD's webinar, Wood and Metal Framing for Revit, New Version, New Features. Before I start, I'd like to make sure that everyone can hear me and can see my screen, so please raise your hands. You can do that to go to webinar dialog on the right side of your monitor. Thank you for raising your hands as I understand you can hear me and can see my screen. If you will have any questions, you can write them down in the go to webinar dialog under questions and in the end of the webinar I will try to answer them. And now I can introduce myself. My name is Eve and I am an architect and a BIM consultant here at AJ Kent. Our mission is building them together, which means that we align our clients' needs and develop solutions for continuous BIM acceleration. Our promise to clients is reducing BIM stress. We help to eliminate tasks that do not create value. And in this webinar, you will see how to distribute stats by predefined spacing and restart the distribution in relation to openings. Also, split the sheeting by openings vertically and horizontally, and even prioritize the merging in vertical or horizontal directions. Frame joint openings by creating custom trimmers uh, for left, middle, right, and center locations, and also uh, have more control over top and bottom cripples of the openings. You will also see how to align top or bottom plates, uh, top or bottom plate supports to the top or bottom plates, and split that by brace, and finally create assemblies of multiple frames or modules. So I already have a project open, so let's jump right into the live demonstration. This is my model in Revit. As you can see, uh, some of the walls are already framed, some of the walls are empty. So during the presentation, I will frame uh, all of these exterior walls that are left. So uh, some of you may already know that with our, our framing software, you can distribute structural framing elements into the Revit models, uh, into the Revit models walls, floors, and roofs uh, automatically. So before using our tools, you have to have the model already created in Revit. Then you load the families and all of these structural framing elements are loaded to your project and then you can use them. So the main thing that is new in the new releases are the new families actually. Uh, right now they are way more faster and uh, you will see that when you will click on the load families, you will see that the main uh, new families are used for new configurations and right here you will see a note and in this note you will see an explanation so new families uh, these ones will replace the old families these ones also new configurations with the new families used in them will be loaded automatically uh, together with the software new families can be renamed to all family names and used in the old configurations. So for example, you can take this stud family, duplicate it four times and rename it with these names. And then you will be able to use this new family in your old configurations. We recommend to do that because these new families are uh, a lot faster. So new families are simple and enable framing of walls twice the speed. And the, the new framing te technology is very flexible. So you will just have to turn on this parameter in the modify configuration settings and everything will work fine. So this parameter will be turned on automatically to the new configurations. So if I would open the framing configuration, you can see uh, in them, in the modify configuration settings, enable new algorithm for wood framing using new families. And this will be turned on automatically for the new configurations with new families. But if you will uh, try to create your own configurations, just make sure to turn this on. Okay. So now, 
I will start from showing you the new possibility that will let you to distribute stats by predefined spacing and restart the distribution in relation to openings. First off, I will frame this first floor of my building. So you can see three panels right here. I will select them all and I will click on frame wall. Okay. And right now the tool is automatically distributing all structural framing elements to the walls that I've selected by the created rules. I'm using the standard frame configuration with the new families and it works much faster than previously. Okay, and the first floor is framed. I will also open an elevation view that I've created for this, for this walls, for these walls, so here it is. It's framed and also I will dimension them so I can explain you the point better. I will use smart dimensions for that, also a feature from our software and dimension elements automatically. So you can see that by the previous method that we always had, we distribute stats by spacing and the spacing completely ignores the position of openings and that is okay if you need that. So the stats are always distributed by 600 spacing. So here's the top cripple and then the stud and then the stats continue. For this panel, the same, we frame the wall by 600 and the openings are ignored. The spacing does not restart from the opening, but uh, we receive a lot of requests for the spacing to restart in relation to opening. And that's why we implemented this into our framing software. So now I can open the framing configuration and I can turn on align that spacing with frame and opening sides. And you will have a few possibilities here. So you will be able to restart the spacing from the right side of the opening or from the left side of the right, right king or from the pieces of the king. So you can choose uh, the option that you need. So in this example, I will choose the opening's right side, save it, and I will frame the second floor, frame wall, and you can see that intentionally, intentionally I chose two identical floors so you could see uh, that the stud spacing will be different. Only this panel is not the same because in the first floor I have the door, but here you can already see that even though the panels are identical, the stud spacing after the opening changed right here as well as well as here and the second floor is framed as you can see very quickly and i will open another view that i've created so here you can see the first floors walls and here you can see the second walls the second levels floor walls uh, and you can see here that i have this opening and previously as i showed you already the stud spacing ignored the opening like this so it was always the same but now when i restart the spacing from the right side of the opening you can see that i have the standard spacing but when i reach the opening so the right side of the opening the spacing restarts and i right here i will have 600 again and so the same thing happens here. So in every panel, the same thing. And again, the opening and 600 again. So the stud spacing restarts from the opening. And also you may already notice that when I frame the walls, the tool asked me which configurations, uh, which configuration do I want to use? That is because in the link wall, you will notice a new column that is called configuration. And you will be able to choose from two options, fixed or variable. If you choose fixed, after frame wall command or when adding additional layers, the software will use the configuration that is set 
in the framing configuration column. So if I would use fit, this configuration will be used, no questions asked. If I choose variable, after frame wall command or when adding additional layers, the software will ask you which configuration you'd like to use. So if here I could have two configurations, the software will, let, will ask me which configuration do I want to use each time after I click frame wall command. And this is extremely useful if you want to use different configurations for the same wall type. For example, in this building, I created a lot of panels that go from the first to the second floor, like this one, or from the second to the third, but I also added walls or large panels that go from the first floor to the third floor. It, it, the reason is because I want to show you a lot of different possibilities uh, how you can split sheeting right now. So that is why I created my building like this. And also, I'd like to show you that now I can use even though this is the same wall type, I can use different configuration for a panel that starts from, uh, that is created for a single level and for a panel that is created for multiple levels. For example, here I can select these two panels, click on frame wall, and you can see that now I have this window uh, that is asking me to select the configuration and I'm able to choose between these two whereas previously if I would choose a fix or or if I would choose fix right now it would create a frame with this configuration no questions asked so I would choose this one for the panels created for a single floor and for this one I will choose a different configuration and I will have more bridging elements here Again, frame wall, and I will choose this one, okay? So you'll see that it will be slightly different, like this. Yeah, you can see that I have another bridging. It's not added throughout the openings. Also, I don't have the stop lead support in, in here, and it's, it's just slightly different. Also, you will be able to split the sheeting by openings and even prioritize their merging in horizontal or vertical directions while keeping everything aligned with the main frame. I will open another view that I've created for the sheeting. And right now, I will just quickly reset all parts. Okay, so first of all, we can take a look at this front view of the building where I will split the sheeting uh, horizontally by the openings and also merge the parts horizontally. I will open the wall link and you'll see that I map this configuration for the sheeting so we can check it out. This is the configuration that I will be using so first of all we set the panel size, the sheeting size and in the sheeting layout for the outer sheeting, I said that I want to align the sheeting with the studs and joists, also merge them by horizontal prioritization and uh, split and add horizontal splits on the opening sides. No vertical splits will be added for, for this configuration. So now I will first of all split parts for this wall and uh, the sheeting will be created as parts category in Revit like this. So you can see that splits were added on horizontal sides of the openings and they were merged by the size that I predefined in the configuration. Also, I can split the sheeting for this wall. And this is a slightly larger panel, so you will see a different situation. And that's it. So vertical splits were added only where the sheeting exceeded the maximum size that I predefined in the configuration and horizontal splits were added elsewhere. We can take a look at this also from the front view. So you can see that also it's aligned with the main frame and previously it was not possible. Only with the new versions. Okay, let's go back to the 3D view and and let's take a look at another situation where I will split sheeting uh, vertically from the opening sides and also merge them in a vertical direction. So again, first of all, I will select 
these panels and split parts for the sheeting. Right now you can see no horizontal splits are added. And I can do the same for this larger panel right here. Yeah, again, you can see that this part was merged, no split was added. Yeah, it was merged in a vertical direction. Again, we can take a look at the front view. And you can see that for these panels that were added for the first and second floor, sheeting was split like this, and for this larger panel, it was merged. Okay, and another example. So, as you understand, these are just examples. You can create many more different rules by your own criteria. So now I will split the sheeting for this floor. And in this situation, uh, the sheeting will be split by openings in horizontal direction and vertical direction. And the vertical split will be added uh, on the nearest step next to the opening. Also, the parts will be merged horizontally. So I will, sorry, wrong button. I will sp split parts for the first floor. So you'll see an even more interesting situation where vertical splits are added to the nearest stud that is next to the opening. And for this panel, I used a bigger sheeting size so you can see that they go from uh, the bottom to the top and they're not split and because i wanted to show you a different situation for this panel i used a smaller uh, sheeting size so i can have even this kind of situation where parts are merged in horizontal prioritization okay so these are the new features regarding the sheeting split. Now I will open another view and show you new possibilities uh, of joint openings. And here you can see that I have uh, two windows that are close to each other and also a door. So I will open the framing configuration. And from now on, you can see that in the opening framing, I will have more possibilities for joint openings. I will edit this configuration and you can see that now I can have asymmetrical trimmers and I can, uh, I can create them differently for the left side, for the middle, and for the, the right side, for the center, and I can have more control over top and bottom cripples. But I think I selected the wrong one. Yeah, this one for the bearing. So, in this situation, for two windows that are close to each other, I will add this element in the middle, and each window will have a trimmer on the right side and on the left side. So, you will see uh, a rotated element between two simple trimmers in this situation. Also, I will go to a window door joint framing because I have a window and door joint right here. And for the window side, I will add a simple one, one trimmer. And in the door side, I will add two. So you will also see a difference here. Okay. And now I can just select this wall. And at the same time, I will select the second floor and I will frame them. Okay. And uh, we can see this rotated element in the middle between two trimmers is added. Yeah, just like I predefined in the configuration. And also for the window side, I have one trimmer. And for the door side, I have two. So you can frame joint openings more freely and create even more complex situations than before. Also, we can align top or bottom plate supports automatically from now on.
So previously, uh, when you had two top or bottom plates uh, in your wall, you had to calculate the distance from them. You had to enter the distance manually, and if you had if you used different uh, different uh, sizes of plates or if you used uh, various amounts of plates depending on your wall type then it was uh, it was hard to calculate it every time but now uh, i can modify this wall for example and add a support automatically of course you can add that in the configuration but i will just modify the frame go to the blocking and nogging apply it and also i will say that i want to add it from the top because i want to add a top lid support even though the, you can also add a bottom lid support i will add a top i will align it to the internal frame side and if i will turn on the stick mark top lid support you will see that offset from the top will be grayed out because it will be calculated automatically for me okay and that's it you can see that the top lead support is added automatically and you didn't need to calculate anything also i can open a section view where we can see the support aligned from now on we can split this by a brace automatically so for this, I will open a project with a metal frame because uh, we have we have uh, this, the same socket for the metal framing as well. I will frame this wall before adding a brace. So it's the same workflow. I just select a wall that was created in Revit and structural framing elements were distributed automatically. And now I can add or modify a brace I can add it between studs or plates. So I'll choose this plate and this one, and it's added. But now I would like to split these metal studs automatically by the brace that was just added. Right now, the brace is considered as an external element in my frame. So for it to be added, I will go to the additional elements menu and add the brace with the split and that's it the brace was added to the frame and it split the metal studs automatically so now you could just add additionally some metal plates for for the brace and create your own custom situations and last but not least you can now create assemblies of multiple frames in Revit or modules. For that, I will open this project that I have a lot of identical walls and, and uh, uh, wall modules framed. So uh, first of all, you will have to frame these walls. And you also saw how to do that. That's pretty easy. But actually, with the multi-framing functionalities, you can frame only one wall or the whole module and then you can copy and update the frames to all identical walls or modules so it's it's uh, 10 times faster than you would be going through every wall and framing it also when you make a change in one panel you can update the change throughout all panels in your project so that is extremely convenient and saves you a lot of time and uh, it prevents you from making errors so i already framed this project and now uh, what i can do is i can join the assemblies so i also created individual assemblies for this module and you can see them here so uh, like previously with our software we framed the wall we created an assembly and all of the predefined views and schedules are generated automatically so i have a free view created for this individual wall i also have a frame front view where all elements are automatically dimensioned they're also automatically tagged i have the plan view again it's automatically dimensioned 
And finally, I have the schedule. So I have this information for each wall in my module, but let's say that I want to um, that I want to create a view, a 3D view of the of the module, and I want to create drawings and schedules of the whole module and not of individual frames. I can do that with a new framing software. So we can create the assemblies of the panel or we can uh, we can add frames. But I created assemblies before that, so now I can use add frames or assembly to assembly and select. So I'll add this one, then this one, and all of the other walls that belong to the same module. Okay, I think I think that's it. Yeah, and now I just have to click on finish. Okay, and that's it. So now we can see that we have a 3D view and we have a framing plan detail view where all elements are automatically dimensioned by rules that are created so you can modify these rules. And we also have schedules with the assembly material takeoff and the assembly part list and the schedule of the frame where each panel is scheduled. And finally, we can create a sheet where we can add a plan view, a 3D view, and a schedule. So that's all that I wanted to show you uh, during this webinar. Uh, don't run away, those of you who had questions, I will answer them in a minute. Uh, and for those of you who don't have any questions, I highly recommend you to download a trial uh, and try use the software for yourself. So you just need to go to egcad.com, download tools for BIMDOC that works like a separate dashboard in Revit, and from there you will be able to download the wood framing or metal framing tools and try these features out for yourself. If you will have any questions after the webinar, you can go ahead write this and I will try to answer them. So thank you everyone who attended and stayed till the end. I hope that you found this webinar beneficial and I also hope to see you in our future webinars. Have a nice day or a nice evening and goodbye. AGA CAD, Building BIM Together.